Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Studio G. On today's show, we have information on the shooting on the strip suspect. We have the latest update on UNLV now from the recent Board of Regents meeting. And Allison Whitley sits down with Solar Decathlon Representative Heather Holmstrom. All this and so much more right now on Studio G. Hello and welcome to Studio G. I'm Austin Innie. And I'm Heather Fairberger. And now for an update on the deadly shooting and crash that took the lives of three and injured several others. February 21st at Las Vegas Boulevard and Flamingo Road. Self-described pimp Amar Harris surrendered to a team of police at a North Hollywood apartment Thursday, according to authorities. Just one less thing Las Vegas drivers have to worry about. You've heard of the famous movie Snakes on a Plane, but a new dance craze has authorities questioning the safety of shakes on a plane. The Harlem Shake is the latest viral video dance giving Gagnum style a run for its money. They usually start with one person dancing alone and then others <clears throat> joining in. Now the FAA is looking into this video. It depicts this dance on a Frontier Airlines flight in midair organized by a group of students from Colorado College's Ultimate Frisbee team. The FAA wants to know if the plane was on its final approach and if passengers should have been buckled up. A Frontier Airlines spokeswoman says all safety measures were followed and the seatbelt sign was off. Worst case scenario is we hit a little clear air turbulence and bodies start flying all over the place. At plenty of other Harlem shakers on planes. This group of cheerleaders from Toronto was headed to a competition and says it did its shake during a layover. However, former airline pilot Jim Tillman says an airline is not a place for fun and games. Is it fun? Maybe. Is it cute? Maybe. Is it good judgment? No. In the Colorado case, Tillman says he hopes the FAA gives Frontier Airlines a strong warning, but that the crew should have never let the dance go on. Last Monday, reporter Stephen Marsh told you about the Barrick Museum and their new exhibit called New Again. Well, this week, Stephen gives us a more in-depth look at some of the exhibits and artworks that make up this wonderful exhibit with the help of the folks from the Barrick Museum. Stephen? All right, I'm Stephen Marsh. I'm standing here with Alicia and Deanne from the uh, Barrick Museum. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the exhibits here from this New Again exhibit that they have going on. So here we have our first one. And what is this one called? This is by Tom Burke. It's called Sex Machine. It's an enamel on aluminum. It's an excellent example of why you should see something in person. You're looking at a video, not the actual painting. So you can't tell that this piece is flatter than flat. It's painted on aluminum, and he's so skilled at airbrushing and painting and stenciling that he's created this incredible illusion. It looks warped. It looks amazingly warped when you see it. Even when I just step away from it in the gallery, it's hard to believe that it is as flat as it is. But when you look at it from the side, you know, it's, it's barely a millimeter thick and it's as flat as the wall. It's amazing. All right, we're here with our next exhibit and what do we have here? This is a painting by Sush called Tiger. This is a favorite piece of preschoolers that come by the museum. Um, I ask them to talk about the piece first in terms of description. I say, tell, tell me what you see. And be, probably because they're very short, they point out this little mouse here. And I ask them, what's going on with the mouse? For example, what do you see? Uh, it looks like he's uh, looking up at the tiger. Yeah, he has a heart for an eye. He's looking up at the tiger. They might, they might assign some type of emotion, like love. Um, but then if you look at the expression on the tiger's face, the tiger doesn't look very happy, so the kids might talk about how angry he is. He's scratching, um, yeah, he's, he's growling. Looks his, like his tongue some is blood there. Out. Yeah, and it's bloody, right? So then I, I ask them, so why does the tiger not like the mouse? Um, and they go on about that. Um, the most interesting comment was that maybe the mouse isn't in love with the tiger, but the mouse really wants the banana which up here is an Andy Warhol reference. Yeah, yeah. And the tiger does not want the mouse to have that banana, so that's why he's angry. 
All right, next, uh, the next exhibit here is called Untitled Echo, and we've got Tommy and Deanna to tell us quickly about that one. So what's the significance of this? I saw one chair, and this particular artist exposed and expounded on one idea of one chair. So that's the mentality I got from the artist, how he expanded. As you'll notice, the chairs are small to a little bit larger. And so I was thinking that the artist had in mind that we're taking advantage of certain things that we use on a daily ba basis, sitting down, and this one design. When I look at the title and I look at the uh, physical shape of it, I think of the sound of an echo. It starts off at a point, uh, it's a noise, and noises go, they get larger, they get louder, and then they start to fade. And that is the shape of this against the wall. It's, it's sort of pear-shaped and then comes in a bit. Thanks to everyone here at the Barrick Museum for taking me around to the different exhibits to kind of show some of the, mm, the nuances of uh, the latest in art. For Studio G, I'm Stephen Marsh. Thanks, Stephen. The Barrick Museum is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday with extended hours on Thursday till 8 p.m. and on Saturdays they're open from 12 to 5. On Friday, the Board of Regents meeting included some updates on the UNLV Now project. The Board of Regents discussed the upcoming UNLV Now project that will bring changes to the university. Not only would the stadium benefit the university and revenue, but the local hotel and resort industry as well. With a current 20,000 seat arena project made by MGM in the works also, the UNLV 60,000 seat event center and stadium would be considered as complementary to MGM's project rather than their competition thing is to, is to make sure that we understand exactly what the project needs to be and that's really what we're doing with the stakeholders right now is to, is to have good active dialogue to make sure that uh, the project uh, not only meets the needs of the university but really truly meets the needs uh, of the industry because this is as much for the resort industry as it is for the university and, and that's a really one of the powerful parts of the project is that it serves uh, two, uh, two uh, very different but complementary needs. The UNLV Now project is taking a lot of time and planning through stakeholders as well as the Board of Regents. With the successful construction of the stadium, it is expected that tourism in Southern Nevada will increase. The potential projects that can result from the new stadium on UNLV's campus and bring tourism include UFC fights, more college basketball tournaments, college football bowl games, NFL exhibition games, and more. It takes, uh, it takes uh, uh, a, a long time to go through a process to make sure that uh, stakeholders are properly engaged and that you, you, you do the project right. So I'm, I'm very committed to making sure that we go through a process that allows us to know before we start to build it that we've got the right thing. The stadium will hopefully break ground within the next few years and be completed by 2017 if all goes according to plan. When we come back, Eddie Vargas has the latest in sports news. And Alexis Murs will have the weather, so stay right here on Studio G. Welcome to the Art Department at UNLV, where students can express their creative side. You can also check out the current exhibits at the Grant Hall Gallery, Jesse Metcalf Gallery, and Donna Beam Gallery of Fine Art, featuring recent artwork displays by students, staff, and local artists. Whether your forte is taking photos, painting a picture, or carving a sculpture. Make sure to check out the UNLV Art Department located in the Alta Ham Fine Arts Building. It's convenience. It saves me a lot of money because I'm on a meal plan, basically. And um, it saves me time because uh, I don't have to walk across the street. Um, it saves me gas because I don't have to drive anywhere to eat. And especially being a lazy college student, uh, I can just walk right over here when I'm hungry and not have to wait that much longer to get food. Well, good afternoon. I'm Alexis Mirth with today's weather. We are at a very beautiful 68 degrees right now, very sunny across the valley. Low winds at 6 miles an hour, but a lot better than what we've been seeing. Take a look at our high. We are actually currently at our high. Our low about 53, and we are just above our average. Our current weather around Nevada. If you go to Tonopah, it's 52. You can see that we're sunny all around the valley, a little cloudy in Fallon, but not too bad. 
and our current weather across the nation. Of course, nice and sunny in Miami. A little snowy in Fargo, 27, kind of chilly. Glad I'm not there. 31 in Augusta. And our national weather in the Midwest, we've got we've got snowstorm Saturn moving across, and it's going to be moving down into the southeast of the Mississippi River. Not too bad over there. Most of the region won't be seeing too much of that rainfall. And tomorrow's forecast: 68 in Mammoth, 59 in Tonopah, and then we're going to be a little more warm at 71 here in Vegas. If you take a look at the extended outlook, we're going to be in the lower 70s, lower 70s and mid 60s throughout the week. So it's going to be a nice warm week and a little cloudy on Thursday and Friday. Well, that's all the weather I have for you today. This has been Alexis. Now over the sports with Eddie. Hello, I'm Eddie Vargas and welcome to your latest sports news on Studio G. The Ravens are set to make history today while the Rebels put a beat down on Nevada's Wolfpack. But first, let's start off with some of this weekend's NBA action. The Miami Heat did it again, winning their 14th consecutive game in a row and tying their franchise record after beating the New York Knicks 99-93. LeBron James had 29 points, 11 rebounds and 7 assists and got a nice block in the fourth quarter after Tyson Chandler attempted to take it to the hole. Carmelo Anthony scored 32 points for the Knicks and his team led most of the game but the Heat controlled the final minutes and won the game, showing that they are still the team to beat in the East. Let's go to the Western Conference where the Lakers are still fighting for a playoff spot on the West. They took on the Atlanta Hawks at home and barely came out with a win, 99-98. With this win, the Lakers reached the 500 mark for the first time in more than two months. Kobe Bryant scored 34 points, but 11 of those were scored in the fourth quarter and Kobe led his team to a victory. But it was Steve Blake who had the most important play of the game after stealing Josh Smith's final pass in the final seconds of the game, and that play locked up the win for the Lakers. Let's go to the NFL where the Super Bowl champs, the Baltimore Ravens and Joe Flacco have agreed to a six-year, $120.6 million contract. This will make Joe Flacco the highest paid player in NFL history. How about them Rebels spanking their in-state rivals Nevada Wolfpack 80-63 at their house? Mike Moser led the team with 20 points which were all scored in the first half. The Rebels shot 48% from the floor and every starting player posted in double digits. The Wolfpack got no closer than 11 points in the second half of this game and the largest lead for UNLV was 25. Keep it up, Rebels, and let's get another win tomorrow when we face Boise State here at the Thomas & Mack. That's all for today in your sports world. Make sure you tune in tomorrow where Justin Fuller will have the latest. Now back to the anchors, Heather and Austin. Thank you, Eddie. Well, if you're thinking about adding a new member to your family, all you have to do is take a trip down to your local PetSmart. Have a look. Around the Las Vegas community, many local animal shelters are trying to find owners for loving and caring cats and dogs. Homeward Bound is just one example of many here in the Valley that has partnered with retail giant PetSmart to help create forever families. President of Homeward Bound, Carol Fox, explains. Homeward Bound is a nonprofit a charity, a tax exempt. We do cat adoptions, that's our focus. We're a no kill group. We've been in business since about two, uh, since July 2007. Since that time, we've adopted out over 300 or about 3,000, I mean, cats uh, into permanent homes. We've been adopting recently about 30, uh, 40 to 50 cats a month. All of our cats are spayed and neutered. They're all tested for feline leukemia and feline AIDS. Uh, they're all current on their vaccinations. And we give people who adopt from us uh, a coupon to have the kitty examined again by our wonderful veterinarian which is Flamingo Pet Clinic on East Flamingo. If there's anything that the kitty needs at that free visit, we pay for it. We want to make sure that the kitty gets a healthy start in its new home. But sometimes it's not only a new start for the animals, it's a new start for owners as well. Dave, a Homeward Bound volunteer, talks about how important Homeward Bound has become to him. About three years ago I lost four of my pets all within the year and I saw a homeward bound here and I was asking Carol what can I do to get this depression fixed and she said go sit in the cages and play with the cats and I did and it went right away uh, amazing it went right away and I've been here three years now. Another example of a local shelter helping dogs find permanent families is Sophie's Chihuahua Rescue. 
President and founder Gene Wickerham tells us more. I started uh, Sophie's and the other half of Homeward Bound about four years ago. And um, I had a little girl that had a grand mal seizure and didn't make it. And so I decided to try and help as many little ones that, that I could. Uh, between Carol and I, we have placed at least over a thousand in the four years. And as you see, I have a lot of three-month-olds and five-month-old puppies. Keeping up with the puppies can be quite a hassle, but PetSmart Operations Manager David Grissar explains the importance of helping and promoting the adoption groups. All the PetSmart stores offer um, different adoption groups from either all cats or all dogs or a little bit of both. Homeward Bound just happened to be a, a really a great group that decided they wanted to get involved with PetSmart, PetSmart Charities, and decided they wanted to find homes for cats and for kittens. So really the, the mix between the two just works perfectly. All of our stores across the country, there's about 1,250 PetSmart stores, all of them have a adoption group. Some of them have multiple groups, which, which we have as well at this store. So everybody's trying to find homes for pets. You can adopt animals every weekend at the Eastern and Russell PetSmart between the hours of 11 and 4. This past Saturday, the City of Henderson held its 10th annual Bark in the Park. The event has grown from its beginnings at Silver Springs Park and has moved around the Henderson area for several years. This year, the event called the new Cornerstone Park home. The new park at Wigwam Road and Stephanie Street is still under construction, but that didn't stop attendees from bringing their four-legged companions. Several animal-related vendors were on hand, including animal hospitals, shelters, adoptions, groomers, and more. Dogs with Henderson Atomic Dogs Flyball Team demonstrated their skills and speed. The biggest demonstration was from the Henderson Police Canine Unit. Hundreds turned out for this year's event, more than 500 dogs have found a home over the last 10 years of Bark in the Park. And Heather, obviously two great causes for dogs, adoptions, and Bark in the Park. Can't go wrong with that. I have to go get one of those chihuahuas. It is so cute. So cute. When we come back from the break, Allison Whitley will sit down with our special guest for today's show, Heather Holstrom. And we come back to an amazing tale that could lead aid researchers to a cure. So stay tuned. I'm sitting down with Solar Decathlon representative Heather Holstrom. Thanks for being with us today, Heather. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. No problem. And um, can you tell us, start off and tell us a little bit about the Solar Decathlon for those who might not know what it is? Yeah, the Solar Decathlon is a DOE uh, competition that promotes solar energy. And so what it is, they pick 20 international teams to design, build a solar-powered home, truck them across the world to one location. This year it's in Irvine, and then have a competition on who designed the most aesthetically pleasing and the house that creates the most energy. And how did UNLV get chosen to be one of those top 20 teams? Um, they put in an application and then the DOE, I heard they had about 40 applications this year and we happened to be one of the top 20 and so they let us into the competition for 2013. And this, uh, this competition isn't just your typical one-year competition. You guys have been working on this for a really long time. Yes, um, UNLV has applied to the competition in the past, um, so they've been working on it for a couple years. It takes uh, several months to write the, the proposal to get in in 2011, and then we've actually been working on the design for the house since the fall of 2011, so we've been in it for a long time now. And uh, the big part about the solar decathlon is that it gets energy from the sun. The house is completely solar-powered. How did you guys look on doing that for your house? What? 
Um, our approach was to design a house that was appropriate for the local climate for Vegas. Um, for UNLV, we wanted to represent not only the valley, but also our unique desert climate. So we took an approach that would have a house that would generate the most energy possible so that we would actually intend to uh, create more energy so we could send it back to the grid, as well as um, showcasing design strategies that you can use in the valley that would make your house more efficient. And you said you use it so it's it's competent to the valley, so the Mojave area. What specific things did you do to make your house ac ap applicable for this? Um, a lot of it is orientation and the materials you use. So we put um, orientated to the sun appropriately so we could get heating in the winter but be able to shade in the summer. We created outdoor climates that would take advantage of evaporative cooling so it would make the outdoor areas a little more livable in the summer. And so, and then also the, the mechanical and the passive systems that we've used all work together so that you don't have to use as much energy and so it's taking our unique climate and using that to your advantage as a homeowner. Solar power is something that's becoming a lot more prevalent as we're getting, you know, yes. as now. Why should people start looking into solar power options as of like this house? Why is that? I think um, solar power is a unique way to make you not have to rely so much on what we would call fossil fuels. I mean, uh, Envy Energy in Southern Nevada uses natural gas and coal, and so it's an affordable option if you use it in the long term and plan it out, and I think it's just a, a way that you can be a little more responsible. And wh what do you say to those people that say it's a lot more expensive? I mean, it is it is a, it is a, uh, a lot of money to put in up front, but does it save you in the long run? It does save you in the long run, and if you think of it ahead of time, like right when you're purchasing your house and you maybe roll it into your mortgage payment, or the, the loan you're getting to build your own personal home, it gets rolled in and so it isn't so much of a sticker shock up front. And for your guys' house, what is gonna happen to it after you guys do your competition, after you cart it off to wherever yeah, it is? Yeah, so after Irvine, we're bringing it back to the Las Vegas Valley and we're working with a local institution so it'll be open to the public as an educational piece. Um, everything's set up for that, we're just waiting for that institution to kind of uh, make the announcement, but it'll come back to the Las Vegas residents. And how long until this competition do you guys? Uh, we we will be trucking the house down and assembling it September 23rd. It'll be open to the public as an exhibit the first two weekends in October at Great, Pike, uh, Great Park in Irvine, California. So hopefully we'll see some uh, residents. It's a lot closer this year. It's a lot closer. And yeah. um, how, how long does this competition typically last? I mean, it's how many? You have 20 houses, so are there different areas that people look into or is it how long? Um, the competition lasts 30 days, so it's uh, usually about a week and a half of assembly, and then you have two weeks where you run your competitions and you have the public exhibits, and then you have disassembly. Um, so there'll be 20 teams from everywhere, from the East Coast to the Czech Republic and Canada, all in this one kind of artificial neighborhood competing against each other and showcasing um, our solar-powered houses to the country. And what is, what is special about UNLV's house? I mean, what makes your guys is different and thinks you guys stand a chance in this competition? Um, I think one thing that we've done, in the, in the history of the competition, there's only been one desert house and it did not do well. And I think we have an opportunity to kind of change some mindsets, um, not only for the local, but for how other people around the world view desert homes and how you can be um, appropriate to this climate. And so I think we've come up with a strategy that is appropriate for the Mojave Desert, but also aesthetically pleasing and energy efficient. And what kind of things did you do to make it aesthetically uh, pleasing? Um, we've worked really hard on the, um, the the living spaces and making everything, you know, your kitchen stuff is where you want your kitchen stuff to be and making the living room an entertainment space. We've worked really hard on blending the indoor and outdoor spaces so your backyard comes, um, rather than kind of a place you go out separately, it's more integrated into your daily life. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you being here today, and congratulations, and thank I hope you, you guys do well in your competition. Thank you. Um, we are going, for more information on how to get involved in the Solar Decathlon, go to solardecathlon.unlv.edu. We are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will look at an inspiring story of the one child that came over, that overcame HIV. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'd like to thank the members of the UNLV community that have started something. I became a big sister to make an impact in a child's life. I became a big brother to get involved in my community. Four hours a month, you can make a big difference in the life of a child. I became a big sister because I wanted to start something. Contact Big Brothers Big Sisters of Southern Nevada and start something today.
HIV testing is now available at the Student Health Center inside the Student Recreation and Wellness Building. Testing is free to all students that have paid their health fee and is available on a walk-in basis only. No needles are used and the results are ready the same day. For more information, contact the Student Health Center at 702-895-3370 or email them at shc at unlv.edu. You must have a rebel card to get tested and results are confidential. Welcome back from the break. Well, a baby born in Mississippi to an HIV positive mother was on antiretroviral drugs for 15 months. And after that 15 months, the mom stopped giving them and stopped doctor visits. She was off the drugs for 8 to 10 months total. And by her second birthday, there were no signs of HIV. Dr. Deborah Prasad tells us more about this remarkable case. What was different about this case is that the child was uh, slightly premature, so was in the hospital. Um, the first few weeks of life. And so two tests were done actually within the first 48 hours of life. And with that, the test results came back by six days of life. We, there was already two independent tests confirming infection in this child. So that promoted continuation of the antiretroviral treatment regimen from say 31 hours of life to 18 months of life. Inspiring story, one that will hopefully benefit future AIDS research. Speaking of inspirational, what can be better than getting in shape and giving back to the community at the same time? Reporter Maria Linderos has more. Alabama Sports Hall of Fame runner Stephen Bolt created the Bolt Series. It is a running event organization sweeping the nation. It promotes a healthy lifestyle and at the same time raises money for many charities. Jerry Tarkanian, or Tark the Shark, is no stranger to UNLV. The former basketball coach also teamed up with the Bolt Tears and helped bring this event to Las Vegas. Families and friends participated in the Tarkanian Shark Attack 5K right here on campus. No one starts out one day and starts running 5Ks or marathons. It takes time. I would just recommend everyone get off the couch and really just get out there and take control of your health. Well, I've been running for about six years. I, hopefully everybody can find some way to stay active and keep healthy with whatever you enjoy. 5Ks or ra road races are a great way to do it, but if you don't like that, well, there's a million other things that people can do. Not only does the Bolt Series encourage fitness, but it also raises money for charities. This time, the event helped out Team Focus. Team Focus is a mentoring program for boys ages 10 through 18 who don't have a father figure. We just fill the gap of the missing father in their lives and we mentor them. We teach them leadership skills to be leaders instead of followers. Jerry Tarkin said he'll put his name behind this and uh, we've, uh, we've had a lot of fun with him. Whether it's getting in shape or giving back to your community or just coming out to have a good time, the Bolt Series certainly does a lot more than promote a healthy lifestyle. For Studio G, I'm Maria Landeros. The next Bolt Series 5K is on May 11th right here on campus. For more information, visit theboltseries.com. In honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday on March 2nd, all elementary schools throughout Clark County have participated in Nevada Reading Week last week. From Monday, February 25th through Friday, February 28th, elementary schools across Nevada have done their best to get their students reading. Teachers, librarians, counselors, and principals have made reading last week their number one priority. In order to do this, students have participated in a variety of different activities, from dress-up days, literacy nights, and decorating their lunchrooms. First grade teacher Isabel Abel explains some of the events the students at Laura Deering Elementary School have participated in. This week is Reading Week. is a national celebration. Uh, uh, we do it because we celebrate uh, Dr. Seuss' anniversary. Well, we have guest readers, and we read books to the kids. We have drop and read so whatever you're doing you drop it and just start reading right away and we do that for 10 or 15 minutes using dr seuss as an inspiration to get students reading the nevada department of education decided that the name for the reading week would be read it dream it do it weeks like these are especially important for students in lower economic schools such as lower Deering elementary school Hopefully reading weeks in schools will get kids interested in reading at a young age and will help them stay interested in reading as they go through middle school and high school. And that will do it for today's show. I'm Heather Fairverger. And I'm Austin Andy. Be sure to catch us every weekday here at noon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.